privilege to have in the new uh, Corbin Morgan on this research project program because she actually brings her practice in its fullness and its entirety. And for all of you sitting here, um, there will be some aspect of a healing that will occur. Uh, and that is, and I think that's important that we can be able to come to some places and come to uh, forums like this and also have that experience as practitioners, as uh, government agents, as policy people, in whatever, whatever position that you hold, that you also um, have a moment or, uh, or two to really um, experience what it is to have a seasoned and loving practitioner uh, bring her practice to the fore and actually share it with you all. So without further ado, um, Taramai, Ipe Kuiya, Ipe Kaya, Hini Wirangi Kuhimuka.
Their name is Henry Wirani Sage, and I'm Henry Wirani Ryan Smear. We just need a Henry Wirani Ryan. <laughs> and so there's a whole one more woman right there. And when people ask me, you see, decolonizing of your brain has to be active, actively active people. Because when people ask me how many kids I've got, I go, wait, just a minute, I've got 23 siblings. Oh, I have about 300 children, and I have about 600 more women, and I have about, you know, 500 great grand more women, because all of those are mine. That's why I tell you, I stole 15 of them, because their mothers were and fathers were busy dacking it and wanting to drink it. So you go do that, I'm gonna look after these babies, I don't want you to have them. No one told. And that's what our Peter Kaiwa would do. They would just pick up, and here they are. Here's my little farm of Gerito. Hey, this is where I learned about the Pahara Keke and its relationship to me as a mother. Its relationship to me as a mother, a grandmother, an auntie, a sister. Hey, all of those things in the real life and what we're going to do really while we're out there trying to be who we are. But I come from that whānau base, and that whānau base is really important to me. My grandpa, he taught me everything I know about animals. <coughs> I knew how to talk to animals, I learned how to talk. He taught me everything I know about plant life. And he used to tell me, go talk to those tomatoes, because if they don't grow, I'm going to pull them out. I remember going over there and talking to them and saying, if you don't get a tomato, I'm like, oh, I'm going to rip you out. Please grow. And I'm going to be crying to these things to grow. And when they grew up, I thought, oh, well, I thought, was he just having me on? But no, if they didn't grow, he would rip them out. It was simple. It was simple too that he taught me to talk to the apple tree when it didn't get apples on it. And then I had to talk to get the apples growing. And you know, so listening to the life of the plant life was this grower. He was beautiful. You know, and my name would dress me up in these beautiful dresses, you know, elegant ass. And um, my hair tied up at night and would fall down and they would come down in ringlets with rags. It wasn't the curlers of the day, it was rags. And then they would drop and they would be beautiful. Then I would go out and play mud pies with my dad, <laughs> with my cousins. They should have taken me back in the washing over and over again. Well, my Colonel knew that, and so he got some of my boy cousin's clothes and let them down in the shed. So when him and I went out together, we would go down the shed and change. And then he would put a hat on my head so that the ringlets wouldn't get all mussed up. And then he would bring me back after we had a fabulous time. He would bring me back and change me back, and my nan never knew a word. I mean, I told her years later, and she just left him. <laughs> I come from a very proud heritage of Ngāti Kahunu. This is the Kahunu Marae, that up in Nuhaha, and if you see those little rings around that, that's my handsome papa, Kāvin. And he taught us as why well he needed to go. My father was really into this breaking of this patriarchal, you know, patriarchal thing about women don't carve rubbish. You know, we have to break the whole imbalance that is out there. And then, you know, I, was a, I know one of those fellows who started that imbalanced stuff. I met them. I, they talk about Bishop Parapa, who took the fame out of Tangata. Hey, Tangata. And of course, he's trying to say it was people's, but really, it was just Tangata. So, really, way back in the time, I have to decolonize all the processes of our beautiful, stunning men that just sell us down the drain all the time. <laughs> That's what my brother says. <laughs> Hey, and we fall in love with you over and over and over again. <laughs> and I wonder why we even bother. <laughs> but we do, because we love them. I have eight sons. I love Delia and they're little assholes. <laughs> get, get real, get real people, because that's where it is on the ground. That's where you are weak in prison. And we learn how to carve. All of us, all of my sisters, I carve. I use chisel, I use bowl. Now that I'm a queer, I'm, I'm, I'm legally a queer, I'm 70 years old, so those men can't come and get out of the car this time. <laughs> I will walk in there because my pop put me. Toku Matua, he is my whanamai tuiwa, actually, my whanamai papa. My first whanamai, my papa was from North, was from Peria. Hey, and I didn't know him, he was a king. And I didn't know him, I didn't, but he's still mine, he's my blood. But you see, I've got three dads. One is the Dharma who raised me. It's the only Papa I really know because he left me the legacy that I have right now. 
You see, all of this is really, really important. What, what, what would the uni, I bet you don't leave a, a thing like this, a PowerPoint like this and gift it to your children at Christmas. <laughs> no. This is, the, this is what you can do. This is what needs to happen more and more and more. Don't sit in your head, because in your head it's useless. And it's a practice and a, and a lived experience, then forget about cutting me out of your head, because I don't listen very well. Because I'm a sport walking kid by my fear throat. I can't do anything I like. And tell me about bad emails. This man taught me a lot of things about Tikana Kalamari. He was beautiful and he was my papa. Eh? He was the kind of man, his name was Anuru Harihana Kuru. He was full blood man, of chiefly papa papa. See? Of chiefly papa papa. Oh, that's what makes me a princess. My colleagues always call me, hey, the car, I might have to put you. And you know, when my, when my, somebody wanted to change, um, you know, that word started with me. Well, no, I'm a poor, so tough. And he was an incredible private man, this man. He was a couple of hot old He was a disciplinarian in our house, although our mother would temper him. Our father held his family as examples and often hard on his sons, having high expectations of the tuatana and was ritualistic in his ways. Papa took his Māori heritage seriously and taught us, it was all that we know, he was deeply spiritual, a great baritone. He was in the, in the what do you call this, the, the 28th Māori Battalion, and he came from home from Italy one time, you know, he came home from Italy, and every now and then he would sing to my mom. Bono no te mi amore, bono no te mi amore, and so we would invite our Papa to come and sing to us. He had a great character. He was an avid sportsman and he played in, in the nickname Bun because he was like a bunny rabbit who could run fast. So we had all, he was private in this whole being yet out there for all of his children. That was my papa. And these are the clear color that helped him in his growth and his life. And there's a, there's a man there. There. That is Maharaya Puya. He worked with Tepuya. And he worked with Tepuya to get the Aupatu Wataku back was that Kurama. That was my uncle. He was the most beautiful uncle I ever remembered. But she sent him out to Cambridge, Oxford, and he came back to first Māori doctorate. Dr. Maharaya Puya was my Kurama. He led us all in that real way of education was this was our Kurama. So I have stories about all of them. I have stories about this queer. See this queer nanny Deti? She used to take me fishing down there every Saturday morning. She'd take me fishing and she didn't even have a fishing rod. And she just went down the bottom of the hill and says, you cut a harakeke and take a panikote, you have pin off it and loft it and then put it on the end, go down and get a go and smash it on the thing and put it on the end of hers. And she would catch five fish all at once, you know, one after the other with her makeshift. But on the way down to the fishing grounds, we had to walk through the, the proper kind of the village. And she would say, hang on baby, hang on, hang on, just hang on, hang on. And she'd stand back and she'd say,
to mine. And do you? Do you really? Have a look at you and how you sing to your little babies, how you hold them tight. But there's a few out there working with my people, or don't bother. If you don't bother with your own, with this person, I'm taking you on my journey. My journey with these clear. See this one? To your daddy now, my cousin, you walk up to my mom. She was the only one there that wore the cold white more when the cold white more came out. Once there when she was being, you know, when she was being done as an old woman. I just and I had this story. She cooked every day outside on a and she made bread in a little hole with pippies on the bottom and she would heat those pippies up and those shells and they, they would cook them. The they were the best bread I ever tasted. I was that I had to do those things. This one here taught me how to plant a kuma. And then to plant the kuma, and to shape the roots to the sun, and to, to how to, to how to put the root them in the lua with the bracken. Hey, we don't do it anymore. Our kids go and buy a kuma up on the other town now. They have no idea. What are you doing? What kind of doubt do you have? What kind of lessons are you teaching? Hey, go down to the mountains. Well, no wonder the world is falling apart. And you even eat lettuce in the, in the winter. Hello? They don't grow in the garden, in our gardens. Hey, you're eating tomatoes, lettuce, you see me? I didn't even get none of that stuff. I'll get a potato kumara and that's it. Because that's what's growing in our garden. Because that's what our Jeta Kuya Kuroa taught us. Eat in the seasons thereof and your body is healthy. But what do I puts out lemons, oranges, all of those things, people? They are vitamin C. Why are we hanging around to get a shot in the bum for your flu injection? <laughs> when we don't even know how to eat properly. <laughs> Let's do it. Most of us are obese. Most of us are dying of all of the things that come with, with, with diabetes, from heart attacks, all of those things. Have a look at the real and see what we really are doing to ourselves, you to you. Because I have to look at that. I've had to look at it from the very beginning of my life. These ones taught me how to be naughty. <laughs> and they taught me about boys and how to watch out for them. And, but they, they also sang my song. They sang all the love songs. They sang and they talked to me. They called my dad baby right until he was 80 years old and they were still calling him baby. He was always going to be their baby. I am six years old. I hear we weed only was born. <coughs> With me came the blood of my mother, the blood of my father, the blood of the ancients, and they are ancients. Blood pulsating through my veins, giving me life. I was born. I, I carried proudly the heritage, Ranginui, Kaumunu, the mighty warriors. I inherited from Ramama Wahine a strong spirit. She, the beauty of the tribe, the Aripi, the Puri, the strength, the mana, strong and free, I, in a real name, was born. I, a power free and beautiful, still a bud not yet opened, sway free in the wind, innocent am I, slowly opening each petal as six years pass, receiving the sun as pleasure. Shadow appears above fear. Dark cloud stands over me. Pain, agony, ripping, darkness, deep despair. Blood forced open. Only darkness remains. Pain grows as a foreign body rapes. Agonies, rape, cries on the wind. Body beaten, battered, hangs low. Shame covers like mist. Little Bud bleeding grows slowly, afraid to open. Still afraid, still afraid. Little body battered and bruised laid, weeping on the grass. Little body battered and beaten, entered, laid, ripped open and defiled. Little body battered and torn, laid, in, laid and discarded by him. Little body small and frail, laid, not wanting to live. 
men will always touch him, fingering that dirty, defiled, dirty space, touching hatred, men, dirty little girl, touch her, she's easy touch, everyone does. I crouch in my darkened body, spirit longing to die. Touch her, echoes in my ears. I run the corridor of my mind, trying to escape the touching. Two years that pass, that touching, the assault cannot die, I'm bound to live. He comes again, the silent scream of terror begins, dark battle cloud comes again. He pushes that hard rod into my body, no, please don't, please leave me, screaming within, whimpering when it's done, cannot escape the pattern. My body, my small body is painful. I cannot leave or I cannot walk. I have lived eight years, why can't I die? It continues. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 10, 14, 15. Shaking of penetration, run to the beach, lie in black mud. Dirty black mud can only be healing. I am dirty black mud. I am not free to run, just pain. Hatred oozes through the mind, mud. Hatred of my body, hatred of men. The pain is growing. I'm growing cold. I'm dying. Sanity bird. I see a small bird beckoning me in, the, in flight. Yes, I must follow. Retreat to where the little sandy bird flies. Cold day, warm day, wind. Call upon that body, sanity bird flies. Cold day, warm day, wind. Call upon that body. Who is caring for the battered body? I am safe in the deep distance. Where yellow passions, pretty things, dangerous, trying to reach me. Cold despair. Talk, say, harbor. I must not join the lonely soul, I must not talk to adults because they don't believe me anyway. For me it's safe in my silence, great needles entering a lifeless frame, electrodes rape again and again, trying to take away the memory, pulling me into that body. I will not go, I will leave, I am safe. No more shame. Spirit of the land over ages, a man animating her now broken child. She sings stringing a battered guitar, her rhymes beneath a withered tree, before the ascended house, fixed there without meaning. Spirit of the land, Pumatuanuku, wailing voice singing the loss of the land, of a child, of a woman, wailing, wailing, wailing. History is conquest. Where is the Roma to heal the past? Who dares take a step closer to the wound? Who can heal the withered tree? Who can revive the land? Who can survive the slaughter? It is in the recognition that, is, that there is a wound. And I have to learn that. And it is in the forgiving. Free rape is about. You want to heal me? You want to heal me? Most about 90% of women are at like me at this stage. You want to heal me? Because you need to heal my kingdom and my body first. Because rape is about the rape of my healing, my mind. You want to heal me? Then heal my mind. Tell me stories, sing my soul into being. You want to heal me? They rape me of my childhood then help me go to that child and help me forgive her and help me forgive myself. You want to heal me? Break this, break down my womanhood. I could not give birth because two, three babies died before I could, which is why I stole them, because I couldn't give birth, because my cervix was damaged as a six-year-old. You want to heal me? Then tell me about that. You want to heal me? When I break down my mother's, my mother couldn't help handle what was that, what had happened. I couldn't talk to anybody. I raked up my traditions. Where is our traditions, women folk, men folk? Where that would have been taken care of instead of us hiding it under the carpet. And hiding it, not wanting to talk about it. 
Where is that healing? Where is your traditional? Because that would have been handled. Rape of my ability to love and be loved. Do you know what that feels like? Never being able to be in love. Never being able to love. Lucky like I had a son, a beautiful little son, that I could lead to love. Where is that? We don't know what loving is about, you know? Because everything has been sexualized. If I tell you I love you, then I have to explain to you, I don't want to hop in the bed with you. Because everything is sexualized. We cannot just say, I love you, right from you. Without thinking, ooh. So heal me, and just love me. Break down my stories. I couldn't tell my stories because I couldn't have a voice. I raped up that too. But I raped up my inability to birth as a white man and to safely birth children. I raped up my spirit, my wayla. And I'm not talking about spirituality when I talk about wayla. I'm talking about my duality. The duality of me, twin rivers, white, blue up. There's no such a thing as. Spirituality in my kingdom, that's a part of the world. I'm going to decolonize <coughs> So, what do I walk around with me? No one cares, walking like a zombie, no loving God when he comes, I just get out of my body, it's easier. The screen, the silent screen, silence, no one believes me anyway. Even when I try to tell, nobody believed me. Isolated, dirty little girl, and that I became filthy from this elegant little princess, hidden within. I can't make friends because I don't trust anybody. I'm weeping inside, no friends, jumping off three-story buildings, trying to die by the time I'm 15. I'm trying to die. I'm jumping off three-story buildings, imploding I am, not knowing how to heal, no one to talk to, loveless, hurt, Suicide, I didn't even know about suicide. All I knew was about crossing the river to my name. I went there to see my name when she died. She crossed the river and I wanted to cross to go with her on that, on that boat. I wasn't even know what the word suicide meant. That's a part, again, somebody else trying to tell me that I was being suicidal. Male hate. Drugs, I was a heroin, cocaine, LSD, trying to die. Self-hate, crying within. I lived in a world of bullshit, deceit, and lies. Then I decided that I wanted to lift people in 2000. I have only been alive for 2000, since 2017 years, where I have not wanted to die anymore. So I needed to heal, so what do I need to heal? Help. This is a real good little plan for you. I need to find my heart, my soul, my life. I want to live. So I need my pepper house. Who am I? Who am I? I? Where am I? Where am I from? I need that. I need my body done to cleanse. I was abused and my body closed itself down. Yeah. I need my music. I need the soul that sings. I need my ticker, I need my puna. What does that mean? What does I need manaki tanga? We have no idea. We think the manaki tanga is always on the one eye, that's about it. But have a look at your own mind. Your ma, ma, ma rai, ekone. My own stories, I need to write those, and I've been writing for a long time now. My tribal histories, I needed my customs, my ticker, my color. I need to restore that so we can stop hiding. We hide behind all sorts of things. I need my tapu noa in the air, and I need all of that. I need my toro parapara, te whakatau nga para. I need my papati whakapananga with you. I need to make my connections. I need the importance of wira kara kapi waikara because they are my soul and they are my beginning. I need to know who I am. I need to sing the lullabies. You know, we used to write lullabies for our babies and every new birth I've written for my children. What have you written? And we're going to study two Tere Moana and all of them. But Shheka is about writing for our own babies. And have we? Nah. Hey, but let's get started. 
This is a beginning. I need to know the great migration matter. I need to know how the Dabi Tu, why the Dabi Tu is called, there was a Dabi or Dabi Tu. And I need to know why I'm a part of Mata you know, the face of the Atua. I need to know what the Kura Haupu, the night of the school wind. I need to know all of those things. I need to know those things. I need to know the Pōpiri to call my own soul back into being here and to call that back into being. I need to sing my songs. I need what songs? I need Aloha. I need my moe moe my dreams, my visions. I need to live. You want to hear me? Then take these one at a time. This is a framework in which you can do. Don't give me some psychological bullshit because it's just that's what it is. Hey, don't give me some academic counseling that you heard that's good. Give me your lived experience and I will deal with you. Talk to me about your soul. I'm sick of listening. I went out to find all those people. I went out, I'm six years old, trying to find, believing that I was dirty and will always be dirty. I, you know, still wanting to die. I become, you know, diabetic. I, wanted, I can't die because when I went to chuck myself off the three-story building, my name came and carried me. And I'm having an argument at six o'clock in the morning with her. And a book has come to the Kura to see me standing out there in my life just arguing with my name, except they can't see my name. So guess where they stick me? Into the new hospital, because they can't see my name. I'm 70 today, and I tell you, I saw my name. My name carried me down. My name helped me all the way through. I went to commit suicide up in Dunwata Hills where there is a forest that we take our best blood to the tree. I went there. No hunters go there, no hunters, just a little forest that belongs to Lake Marawa. And then I woke up in the hospital, they reckon hunters found me. I doubt it. I know it was my name. I know. Hey. And because the Bible can't understand, I was thinking in the Tomanui. Or two in two hours, no longer open it. I'll stick you in some place like that because they can't deal with you. Well, I can. I have a great time talking to you guys, mental health. I grew fat. I decided I'd kill myself with diabetes because I'm always in my island group. I went to the alternative therapists, I tried to find them. I went to the bishop, I went to social welfare, I went to doctors looking for the healer, psychologists, counselors, spiritual healers. I went everywhere. See? 250 kgs because I wanted to die. Still trying to die. But I remembered this. Your gift to me then. I give much bigger than myself. In a kumara patch, Papa Tonuku rituals leaving my body to dance in the splendor of the earth room. The language of nature sends sprays of light into my wider self, but I was only a child.
so that I can survive the rest of my life. It was this young hero that changed my life, and he was the only person that I had ever loved at that time. Look at him, not the two little pinkies, the big brother. He came into my life. I began my journey to heal. I fell in love. I don't love you, Mum, when you fly high. I couldn't lose him. The only birth child that lived was my neighbor. I couldn't lose him, the only thing that I ever, ever, ever loved. And the pain of knowing that if I didn't deal with my heroin, if I didn't deal with my LSD, if I didn't deal with my cocaine and with my everyday cigarette, which was cannabis, and I grew to do it. And in fact, my neighbors used to talk to My neighbors watered my plants because they thought they were fabulous plants. <laughs> and they would say, baby, baby, these plants smell strange, you know. And I said, please, I'm a man. But I had to learn to give those away. And I remember the local nurse that helped me do that. It was my own that needed. I began to make, take my own power to heal. I don't need you to heal me. All I need you to do is help me open the door to my healer and let me see my healer within, that there sits in me. I know myself better than you. I know who I am better than you. And I just needed you to hold me and guide me and be my door open and push me in if I wouldn't get in there. He said I too, and then this beautiful baby was brought to me by her grandfather, my beautiful daughter, the only one you She's like a rainbow in my life. She helped me turn inside to look as well. And this man fell in love with me. I couldn't believe it. But he didn't want to have sex with me. He, was, he kept me free of all of that. He loved me for 30 years. He's buried on our island on our burial island and loved me for 30 years, 30 years and didn't make it sexual. You can love somebody without that because I couldn't do that. So to have somebody that loved me like he did and brought me into his family and loved my children, was this me, but the other way, he was from the big island. He taught me to love men and that not all men were ugly. And I began my journey of loving men again with him. My mom and dad took us on the heat with me, wait me all my political things is because of my mother and father and they come on up the struggle for our people. I, I guess the government, of course, because we were labeled rebels, because we fought them and won. And we won that battle. Did you see that battle at the beginning? That's us. Right? This is my beautiful mum and dad. They are the ones that my mother now did. She's just the most amazing woman. Her name is Lynn. Helen Nally, Hini Atara, and Mataira Kuhn. Another couple of she was an entrepreneur, Celtic Māori. She was Scottish and Irish as well as being Māori. She was beautiful, utterly proud about her body. And she told us how not to have sex before then. Well, it was already too late. And she instilled the way you are in us and the sacredness. She brought home the homeless. Every Sunday she would go out and find the homeless on the street and bring them home and we'd have to feed and wash them. And she brought them home to give them a meal. We learned how to be Manaki out on the street. She ensured our father taught us things Māori that we needed to know. She was a matakite. And that school was a natural part of our growing up. And she never allowed us to think it was abnormal. That was just a normal part of living. That's why I wear the whayai, right on it. She was a great cook, great craft maker, and all of those sorts of things. My mother was that kind of woman. So I have a lot of love for this, my mother, and because she gave us the best mother she could possibly be. But hiding my dying, bearing my dying, my son and my daughter, still not wanting to live, but I must be strong for them. So I had to learn the kaupapa of Rana, which we don't have a clue about. We just think it's all that nuclear family, just to make us your own siblings, it's not like that at all and we teach our whanau how to be a whanau. <coughs> our whanau are made up of a derito. Then it's surrounded by the farming. 
Then it's surrounded by Tupuna, Dere and Gawai. Then it's surrounded again by Atua. De Atua or Ma Atua, as you might believe that to be. And for me, it's Na Atua, of course. I had to do a bit of the colonization process as people. Right before the 1800s, 1840, this was all in place. I have a really good look at it. I, what was Tapu? What was that all about? The rituals, the whenua, the guardianship, we don't own, have anything such as ownership of our lands. We don't own nothing. We only need a garden to come to you. Right? So I had to go through all the things, one by one by one by one. And how much of that have you decolonized? Have you decolonized? And that'll make yourself. How colonized are you? And then by 1840, of course, this is what all happened. And we all know that. We are forced into it whether we like it or not. We are raped of our culture. We are raped of our whenua, of our waiver, of our healing arts. We internalized all of that. We became colonized with it. Because it was easier. We became victims within the system, in our own homes, in our families. We're alien to Māori culture, can you speak our real? Don't know where we're from? Let's get real. Our people are on the bottom. We have hired in prisons, we have the prison and hired in there. Look, we're, we're about 60 to 57 percent in there, I have men and women. We're the highest in everywhere. So why? We're only a third, we're only a 13 percent of 4.5 million. We're all homeless, why? We've got 66.5 million acres and we're homeless? Why? So we have to think about that. Our responsibility now, we can't keep blaming that side of things to the parliament side of things. Our responsibility is how we claim it for ourselves. We claim your, no, we claim your culture. Go learn. It's free at the what? You're just lazy. Hey, get your butt there and you get a certificate even. I know, I see. Hello. And you get lovely, lovely teachers. Don't like, forget. Hey, we gotta do it. Otherwise, what are you doing talking to our people? And you have no clue about your own. Get real. You have to reclaim your feeling and your way and your healing home, you know? Have to know the blah blah of the healing home. Hine kori 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 tama ingo they pretty twins. The girl is called Hine and the boy is called Wow. And so I thought, oh, well, hey, they so us trying to tell us that we're the most emotional. Oh, hello, have a look at that. Their names is Maro. Who are Maro? Hey, hey, you know, this Linda Leo, you will know very well where they miss it. Hey. And so you just got to love them to pieces. So we have to decolonize our people who are afraid. Are you afraid to decolonize? Because this is what you're going to do. You've got to decolonize the brain. You've got to undo layer upon layer upon layer. Then you've got to find out who you are. Call Wei Kui. You've got to learn your level. You've got to learn your papa papa. You've got to learn those Puyaka. You've got to learn your mana whenua, mana wahine, mana tāne, mana tamariki, mana kaumatu. And don't separate any of that stuff. Europeans are separating all of the time and we need to do it. You cannot stand alone as mana wahine without mana tāne. I don't care even if you're in a gay relationship or whatever, because it works. Mana tamariki, mana kaumatu, mana whenua. It's easy for everybody to go mana whenua because we don't have to examine ourselves. Hey, decolonize your brain. Then, not, then when you've done that, you've got to start decolonizing your real. Hey, from the missus to hua rama tina. Hey, from the old man to hua rama tina. Hey, you know, the, from the old lady. All of that real big use that are so popular, but start undoing, lay up on layer, come on. Otherwise you start, just stay home and don't go to work, because you're useless. <laughs> and when you decolonize your real, decolonize your processing. How do you process things? Very much in that part of your brain, hey, in that brain that is your models of practice, uh, your theoretical practices have they sing very much like a Bible song. Hey, that's what you went to school to do. But now Chinese change that and work with it. And don't put the Māori tear your kupu, because it's still the concept has to change. Not the Māori to give it a kupu 
name and you Amani name and you think that that's it? No, it doesn't work that way. Then you've got a lot of work to do, just like me. I begin to write my pain and take it outside of me. My good, my bad, my ugly, I wanted to write in a world that was not shrouded in mystery or the mystique. You know how they can say something you're thinking, what do they think? Hey, I just want to tell it like it is. I began writing as a healing program involving other women who needed to be healed because there was nothing out there for us around Tikana Kawa. There was nothing out around there about the body and what they really, really was. And take the romanticism out of it, people. Our people stop romanticizing us because we're just, we're not there. Well, I, I teach in prison and I teach by I've been teaching by forever. And if you men have a problem with that, talk with you. Then we're you. You call it cocaine, what do you do? They eat their body here, here. So somebody has to make sure they can come out with us, with their, with their body in place. And if I have to do that, well, too bad. I've got to do it. I have a responsibility. Because I'm having a responsibility to myself. That's why I take this healing journey. So that they know that they're not the only ones that have to heal. We all have to. We all have to take back our, our manga. We all have to take back our arts. We all have to do everything again. I teach Dawa Pu'or, and I Kwena. And then, you know, what you never, the thing is that you're the clay chapter of these things, of these Dawa. Do you realize that? Because they're Hine Moana, Hine Pute Hume, and Hine Rokatoli. So you best time up best, you best learn how to play. Hey, we'll play this and you can stay up, stay up there and you can have some fun and touch and play and putting them up, see what you can do with them. There are in three sets of Hine Roka Tauri, Hine Pute Hue, the little hui, and Hine Moana, the shell people. Hey, because we only hear about Tamaro, how I we even get marginalized in the Atua. Hey, the Atua is a non sexist level. We have a non-sexist zero people. That's what means male, female. <laughs> right? And we even get marginalized in that. We only hear about Tamaro. Well, there's only one of them. Hey, because you get Coco, who's the god of the safe waters, where the children, the Nelpli and the old Nil, they used to say, Heidi Quick, Peter Coco. Not Heidi Quick, Peter, what are we? Peter Coco. That means go to the safe waters and never wash. So I mean, it's not safe in the ocean anymore because I'm not from there to the horizon. From the horizon thereafter, it's still one under the Akiwa. Because Hine Moana was vast and beautiful. She had 300 and take care of her. But we never hear those stories. We only hear about that because that other world has a evil story. I tell the real ones. <laughs> um, so I, in the Whare Tokairo, there is again, again we're marginalized in the Whare Tokairo. The pare inside is the, is the, the place of Rumo. It is also as you step through the pare, under the pare, into the pare tomato. Come on, people. Let's build our balance back together again. We need to do that. The balance is broken. Right? Through patriarchy. It can't be just matriarchy either. Because that's not the way it is. I began to make masks to have a look at the faces that our people were carrying. And this is an art form. The hurt, the pain, the ugly. I began to do money kaha for fat people like me. Does me on a pitman in a dress can you ever, ever imagine? And <laughs> 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 in, in, in a show, in a, a fashion show, and she told me how to. I said, they're down to give you a camisole because you could see through it. Well, she thought it was a parasol that she brought back on the <laughs> I have all those wonderful stories of, of, of these big, big, voluptuous, beautiful women like me. And because we didn't buy clothes at that time, there's nothing for us that woman. So we began to make them. We had a Wahine tour program, and it was started by me and my sisters. I went to have the spring to handle my addictions. And all of this, this is about the healing. I became 200 kgs, I lost up 50 kgs. Now I'm at 105. <laughs> only, I, only can't be healers. No, many others looking for the healer, I found them. So this is all about trying to find my healer and then realizing I am the healer. Inside of me like you are. You are the healer within me. 
and then really my job now in the prisons is to open a door. And I realized what I had to do was open a door. But nobody opened my door. I had to try to do that myself. I live in a state of forgiveness right now. I use drama to do healing. I use Jero Wadaha to do all of that. I live in Hawaii where we took out, out stories to tell the story to the world. Jero Wadaha also about, this is us women sharpening our tools to try and break that whole thing about women that are cast up. I, but my dad told me what tough to get and talk about in my house. I had to learn to plant the woman Māori Woman Centres. We started those for sexually abused people. Had a film productions work in de design products. Other thing at the Pahara Kiki was an education program that Sunday Royce and all of us went around the multi to teach. We had a beautiful team of, of, of the Kahui Papaduru Home. And we worked hard. But I found that I had something that stopped me. And it was a saboteur inside. There's, we have so many saboteurs inside and you've got a real deal with those people. It's inside that stops you now, I can't do it, I'm not going to do it. So I, have, I, I, I wrote this referendum to my saboteur. I have loved you when I wanted to die so badly. I have loved you, you made it possible for me to cross that river. I have loved you, a strong voice in my head, strong voice in my body, a voice that embedded itself in my body that none could take away, not even myself. I have relied on you to remind me day after day that I needed to cross the river and you kept that promise. I have shared with you what crossing the river was about. It was about happiness, love, fulfillment, truth and light. I know the battle I now have to help you understand the new message needs to carry is. I don't need to cross that river anymore. I need you to help me to live, to become my savior and not my saboteur. I need you, my Saviour, to leave and become my Saviour. I promise to love you. I promise to give you the respect. I promise never again to want it. I promise to live a good life of goodness and give you the credit. I promise never to battle with you again because we both know we need to say goodbye to that Saviour who was there when I needed her. I love you. I weep for you. But you must cross the river alone. He moko puna kwe na hine ti tama wai wai ana na karu ti ti ra pangatu ki te pakai rantama he. I am 
Lord, I am whole, I am here, I am a woman, I am a goddess in the making. I am gifted with the knowledge on the top of fire, a knowledge that can help me bring balance. My body is perfect. In my viewpoint through life, I have walked a new pathway. That I will walk, I am ready. I am gifted with Jupuna. I am gifted with my Kriya. I am gifted with my Kuru. Before, I come, before coming, I chose to come. I chose my wonderful parents. I am gifted. These are the things that I had to do to look at loving myself. Woman and children rights, Māori woman theatre. I worked for the Nuclear Clean in the Pacific. Loving myself into being a work for the International Indian Treaty Council. I am the Vice Chair to this day. Asia Cultural Forum on Development. I started the Whakaruru Hope, the first Māori woman's refuge, and my father named it. I work at the United Nations. I've just come home from New York. I don't smoke cigarettes, people. Better you lot. The Kaman or Tepana. They were looking for you to drinking and heaps of things and they were trying to save our people or our <coughs> You gotta live what you talk about. Because if you don't live that, then you're living a lie. See like what, what, what Linda says. You gotta decolonize yourself. Because if you don't, if you're not in the process of colonizing, then you're just as bad as the problem. Like you're the problem, not the solution. I am a Ramatira, as my children were before me. I am a woman, my wahine, a strong and beautiful woman. I am Kupe, the explorer who sailed from a Waiti. I am Rami, the all encompassing father in the sky. I am Yamuna, the goddess of the ocean, the ocean itself. I am Papa Tuanuku, with the seeds of Aroha. I am a Tani who is, has seen the realm of the world and received the three baskets of knowledge for humanity as well as the two mighty stones, Rehutai and Hukutai. I am a Tu Te Puehu, Te Whenua, the strong one who will never again allow others to hurt me or my children. I am Tafiri Mata Yungi Ngahu Lewa. I am of here Ahukone, Tihe Mauriwara, she who breathes natural life, she born of natural things into a natural world. I am of Yomo, Yato Te Rangi Marie, understanding the peace within me. I am of Maui, the mischief, the trickster, the naughty one. I am of the sacred waka that carried the sacred things of worship to Aotearoa, Te Waka Taku O Tāpi Tūmu, Kura Hauko Makaatu. I am of, of a full blood but Māori father who nurtured the traditions in me and who ensured that the language of my people lived within the ancient stories, stayed alive within the beautiful way of the songs that sang me back into being. I am of my grandmothers and a strand of the kete they weave. I am of my grandfathers and I walk in the footsteps that they leave. I am of my children, my daughter, a dark beauty with a twinkle in her eye. I am her and she is me. I am of the softest beads of feathers should she fall. I am of the sun, blonde and blue eyed that came from me and I recognize the gifts of another race of people who linger with them. When I look into the eyes of my children, I see my ancestors. This is only a part of who I am and those who were with who I am Papa Papa. I am Mali. I need to heal. I need my healed stories to heal. I need my songs to sing as I heal. I need to heal others so I can heal. I need you valid I need you to validate that I am Mali need to heal in my tradition. I need my mother's stories, I need my father's stories, I need my grandmother's stories, I need my grandfather's stories, I need to know the preciousness of my body, I need to take back in all the hurt and pain to wrap it up and send it on its way because I need to forgive. I need to hold you in all in my arms and tell you, I love you 
And in the tears of joy fall, because when you, I can heal. Arohanui kia koe. Arohanui kia koe. Hey, 
and we start to laugh. We don't even know that sacredness, nor do we apply it in our teachings. And so some of the things that you learn in the making of Kōwawa is that only lovers when say you swing from that space. It's got no music. Hey, but the music within the song. <coughs> well, I want to I want to see to my honey a minute, and I will close my eyes so I don't have to look at you. <laughs> I'm to my honey. You guys are handsome. Man. Oh, that's not to say you're not handsome. You are. <laughs> but I want to hear that song, song. That's the insane man. And you can have it play with such a with all the seats. There's another way of putting it. Have to get it. Anything when I hold it, it can play. You can't even play this. I'm not that some puppy snap, so I'm not being racist. Because we've got a Mahi snap and it don't look like this is bigger. So you just need to tell me. You see, so it's like this, you know, these are, I see enough of you guys chuckle out. But you know, for kids when they want to learn how to play the way you're too scared to give them uh, your poor old walking can you this?